This little kid's toy is more repairable than modern computers that cost thousands of dollars. I have this leapfrog kid's toy here, and uh, it's it's been having some problems. When it's on, it'll just start going like and like turning itself on and off a bunch, all that kind of stuff. So I took out all the screws to see what's going on inside. And uh, sometimes, so just a quick overview in the middle, there's a little MCU or something that's controlling everything. It goes out to all these different sensors on the underside, which are kind of fun. Some of them are very interesting little engineering feats, like for the, uh, this one is a little spongy over the years from multiple kids. There's one over here. Is this the one? No, what is that? Oh, that's just the trumpet. The trumpet just goes back and forth and there's a little slide switch. Where's the, uh, there's one, another slide switch. This one is a, uh, a little banjo. You pull on the banjo, it spins inside, but you can see the little switch down here. And you know what's cool is when they made this thing, they made it, let me turn it off. Hold on. It's actually working okay right now. Actually, you hear that? So see, so just wiggling the switch, it's a sliding switch. It's turning on and off, and that's the problem that I'll get to. But whoever built this thing, all of the little connections are visible. So if there is a problem with the switch, you could see it. You could even repair it. That's crazy. This little kid's toy is more repairable than modern computers that cost thousands of dollars. Um, and it's all screwed together. There's no glue, no clips, nothing like that. That was really cool. But anyway, so this slide switch here looks to be the problem. And uh, luckily, it's not the language switch because it would be switching between English and Spanish all the time, and that would be pretty crazy. Uh, but it, another funny thing about this is if it's in Spanish mode, it seems more reliable. In English, it doesn't. So I'm guessing that's with this little switch matrix on the back here that takes the power in from these batteries. That's what these wires are right there. It comes into the board on these traces, goes over to the main switch, and then it switches on and feeds the MCU both of these inputs, I guess. You can see that ribbon cable goes over to the little main controller board back there, and it is the brains behind everything epoxied on, so no way of fixing that really if it breaks. Anyway, so this switch, the nice thing is all the contacts are exposed in there, and uh, the problem just looks like it's dirty. So I'm gonna go grab some deoxid. Hear that? So just moving it around, it does that. It works a little better on the loud setting, but then it's very loud, so we don't like that. Actually, it doesn't. So, yeah, I'm gonna get some deoxid, spray it on there, and see if this switch is a little bit more reliable. Yeah, so we're gonna do that and see what happens with this thing. Maybe I can resurrect, I think this was like 100 bucks or 50 bucks, I don't know. But uh, it was certainly better built than a lot of modern technology is, with repairability in mind and the ability to replace any part with just some screws, so. Good job to leapfrog on that. I apologize for the audio and I have no idea how it's gonna sound, but uh, I'm in my basement and uh, this is Deoxit. I just grabbed it from the studio and it's not in focus, there it is. This is for cleaning electrical contacts. Now, one thing I, I realized is this switch might, it might be making fine contact, but it might just be that the uh, the actual switch part, this little part that, that touches those blades is getting worn out. So if that's the case, then I would just need a new switch and I would have to look up what this part is that has all these different legs on it. But we're just gonna spray this in there and see. Oh, and I just noticed you can see back there, there's the, uh, let's see if I can focus on it. That's the uh, Raspberry Pi Shake, which detected the earthquake in Russia, which was pretty cool. I have a video on that that nobody ever watched because nobody cares about citizen science, I guess. Uh, but anyway, uh, here's the oxit. I'm just gonna take this and spray a little bit onto this switch. So we're just gonna spray a little of the oxit. You can see, well, you can't see, but I can see into the little blades inside there. And uh, first I'm gonna spray a little bit onto a paper towel just to get it out of the tube. Okay, so we're just gonna spray a little bit in there. Okay, now we'll switch it. And it's getting some friction in there. And I'm already hearing better contact, so. Hear that? It's not resetting. And it's louder. So I think, I think that was the fix. 
So these bottles are like gold for fixing up old electronic things. And this isn't that old, but uh, it definitely got it working. And now my son, who is 11 months, will have this thing working well and not going like that all the time. And we won't have to switch it to the Spanish mode, although it's nice for him to learn multiple languages. We won't have to force it into Spanish mode just to get it to work well. So anyway, this is uh, level two Jeff and we have a successful repair of this toy, just spraying a little deoxid on the switch. And now it could possibly live another five, 10 years uh, once we pass it on to some other family. I will clean out a little bit. So I got a lot of overspray in here. I'll clean that out a little bit. But uh, the oxid is fine to kind of leave. It's not, I think it's inert in terms of electrical contact. It just cleans. Uh, so I'm just going to clean that up a little bit, the part that I sprayed out. And then now I need to remember to uh, make sure that this is on. I think it's just, this goes on like that. And then I got these two screws. The cool thing about this toy, another cool thing, whoever engineered it, every screw in here works with the same screwdriver. Like, how crazy is that? Even little SBC things that you'd think would use the same screw for everything don't do that. So again, nice job to uh, whoever was on the team that designed this thing, making it easy to repair. Whenever you're putting back together something that uses plastic standoffs like this, these are just plastic screws. They don't have any threads like metal threads. I always go back a little bit until I feel it kind of starting and then I start screwing in because otherwise you're going to form new threads in the plastic and that eventually will wear, wear down that plastic and you won't get as strong of a connection. Similarly for 3D prints, if you use plastic screws on 3D printed uh, parts, you don't want to re-thread them once you've threaded it one time. So go back a little bit and then now I feel it going in and it goes down nicely. Okay. You've got all those. Well, we have one screw left over. And uh, that's actually not too bad for a project with this many screws on it, but you can see, off, on. There's no, uh, no play anymore in this. I can wiggle it around, no problems. English and Spanish mode, no changes. And uh, everything's working. My favorite part of this is this little banjo guy. And I just noticed the frequency of that spinning is uh, such that it looked like it wasn't spinning until just now on the phone with the uh, 30, 30 FPS shutter on here. But yeah, everything, everything is working. And all thanks to one little spray with the Oxit. So there you have it. Level two Jeff. We're fixing toys now.